For this talk, we have Hao Xu. He's a senior software engineer at Affirm. Hao is going to talk to us about how to use Apache Beam to build machine learning feature systems. Basically, he's sharing the uh, case study for how they do this at Affirm. So give it up for Hao. Thank you, Hao. Yeah, cool. Um, uh, thanks, guys, for still staying here for the one of the last few events. And yeah, today's topic is about like how we use Beam to build a machine learning feature system uh, at a firm. Um, so a little bit about myself. Um, even though this project is with a firm, but kind of currently already jumped uh, to another company, but I want, still want to share the kind of great experience working at the firm, how we build the infrastructure, the use case in the financial technologies, and probably, I think some of you guys already attend uh, one of the events in the afternoon, like my uh, ex-colleague Nadia worked on mostly on the infra side. Uh, for me, I'm more like wanting to talk about the, the actual use cases like in the machine learning. Cool, um, so today's content is gonna be, first is some of the backgrounds about like, the feature system or stream platform and the pain points we collected from the, our stakeholders, like data scientists or MLEs, and also the solutions we were doing, like the some kind of fancy architectures, um, and also the outcomes, either the performance or like dev velocities. Okay, the so backgrounds, uh, a little bit about the final pain nature, um, which is kind of a financial loans. And let's jump onto that. So buy no pay later is basically when you purchase something, you don't directly pay it in full. Instead, you can pay it by like selected plans, um, like showing there like three months or six months, 12 months. Uh, it's interesting there. I, when I first learned this product, I, I didn't actually gain the benefits of using it. You know, there are credit cards. Like you, you, when you use credit card, you get the, like the rewards. It, it seems more like uh, meaningful than like uh, this kind of loan finance. But then when I buy a house, when I buy a house, I'm on kind of really big mortgage debt. And then I start to, to learn like paycheck by paycheck. Then I realize, okay, this is something really useful, especially it doesn't hurt your like credit. It's just like based on your kind of financial situations, like, you know, the banking account, something like that. So no, no credit card information. Anyway, like, uh, I don't want to brand in this product too much since it's more like a technical um, conference. Okay, so, well, so from the, the use case there, it's like we have people need to pay it like in the series of payments. Like they do the first um, maybe on February 15th, second one on March 15th, and then on the third one, they fill the payment. So something bad happened, we, we wasn't able to charge that. So for the forthcoming payment, how, how would we predict, is this user actually able to make it or not? Or with this kind of, even though he made this payment, is the next loan coming out, should we still approve the loan? Or should we just like, maybe just decline because we think it's a really like a potential bad users. So basically, Likely, we need to figure out uh, these questions by using like, like, like a really time difference from the last payment, last payment figures until the time like the, the user making this payment or like making these loans. So maybe you already learned from like our like previous sessions, like we uh, kind of companies switching to out like a streaming infrastructure to improve the uh, performance. You, if you think about that, if we still doing the batch data to get the time since the last payment figures, it's kind of really uh, not good because like we need kind of to learn the user situation at this moment. So streaming really helps. Uh, so there is like Kinesis, Kafka, and based on that, there is Flink to build like more like stateful processing. Um, but generally, if you learn that SH transfer is like in, in a bad transfer, and some companies uh, are building some real-time transport transportations and in the payment tech, and that's kind of really new technology too. 
OK, so feature system is nothing but like a, a storage, like a, um, storing your features is online storage, more like serving your online features or offline data, like on of offline storage. And pinpoints. OK, so pinpoints is um, we want to do build something with more realistic use cases. So we don't want to like build something without a direct use case. So we work with data scientists, learn their pimples. And these are some we collect, collected. Uh, first is we have some old system using the stream data. But in order to onboarding a new feature data, you have to backfill all the histor historical data. For example, I create a new feature now. When I onboarded it, it only has the data starting from today's. But I really want it like maybe from 2015 or 17, then I understand the full his, historical situation about this user. So backfilling is kind of really important. But when it's come really slow, it makes us really sad because some of the people need to babysit like the pipelines to backfill the data. And if the pipeline failed, they have to restart, rerun it again and again until you, know, you get the right data. Another one is like the excessive code like to define feature. Um, this is really um, depends on like your code base. Uh, so we want to simplify that because um, we think about like, our users, like data scientists, they don't use, they don't write a lot of like more software engineering code with more like required style, like and also the testing. So we want to give them like more easier user experience, hey, you just need to run like maybe three to five line codes, you define the feature, and that's it. Uh, variety is like a, more like the, the, the ability for creating new features. So uh, the, the inability to join to different streams from Kinesis together is like a, a really big problem for us before. It's like how do you want to create a new feature where there is user data, there are payment data, but I want to use together, maybe to create a new features. And visibility is like, um, want something like a UI, like, or, or something like a, um, like a catalog that you can easily to see, hey, there's already the feature created. You don't need to like do the, create this new feature again. And also you can look up some of the data sources that, okay, I have this maybe streaming data source that can directly query on that and to create the features. So these are other, like point points, also the places we want to improve. So solution is uh, we want to build like a well like a machine learning feature system. It's not only a storage. Instead, we kind of glue things together. Um, Beam is kind of really important part. It's more like our transformation layer. The reason uh, is because we first select faced as more like a, the the feature registry or catalog, uh, but the face doesn't provide like a transformation out of box. So instead, Beam uh, can glue the things together. Okay, we define this feature and decorate it on onto a like, face. They call it feature views, and providing the sources and define your schema. Then you are ready to to deploy the features. And with Beam on the definition on the transformations. Uh, it can be either run on Flink or Spark. For Flink, it will be like the streaming pipelines, um, and the data will directly write to uh, online storage service online data or online features. Uh, or use a Spark that you can run like at your own convenience or scheduled way to backfill the historical data. And the data will be stored uh, into an offline storage at S3. And from this S3, there are also like a materialized way uh, a method to materialize the data into the online storage. Um, so this is the way we're architecturing the platform or the system. Um, so a little bit about the backfilling. Um, it's kind of still the, 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 the biggest pom -pom, uh here. So backfilling is uh, the process you, you backfill feature data, as I mentioned, to the historical point in time. Um, so we currently are doing is like, we know the, the, know the feature definitions, uh, we call the feature views, into the Airflow jobs. And the Airflow jobs will compile um, this 
uh, Python code in Beam into like a job jar. And this job jar will be loaded into like a stateful, stateful job and running on Spark on EKS and then generate the state data into S3 offline store. And from this offline store, if you feel like the historical is good and you, you want to use the latest feature, then you, it can materialize the, the latest data into the online storage. So what's the complexity here is, uh, I think it's the uh, beam, it's, it's using like SDK harness. And when we, uh, it, I believe it works really well with Dataflow or Google Cloud um, platforms but we can have a lot of like uh, infrastructure, mostly our self-hosted, for example, the Spark on EKS. And when we run it on Spark, we, f we need to figure out a way to, how to run the beam there. And there I introduced some of the, uh, you know, back force trying or playing around until we, uh, reach, we figure out a way to, uh, when we init the container, we, we inject the SDK harness into the container and then run it there, it will be uh, working well. Uh, but still, there's, there's some friction out there and running these Spark jobs. Um, so this is like a transformation um, interface that glue things together. So um, we don't want our data scientists to write the actual beam code. Uh, it will be hard for them to pick up to the learning curve. Uh, instead, we provide some of the uh, functionalities for them to use. They can directly call maybe the windowing. Uh, they can directly define the window or use the window, but providing some of the configurations. Or uh, some of the event transform would be like a, a Python function. You can just call it and add your transformation logic. Maybe you want to clean some of the user, user ID or timestamp. And, all, and then when you run it, uh, this will be for us like software engineer to run it, uh, to choose either uh, the runner is a Flink or the runner is a Spark. And the feature view uh, provided by the Fist will be the, the, the entry point to glue the beam uh, transformations. Uh, and you can see like this feature view will pointing to some uh, to the to the data sources you provided uh, e example is like use a payment data source and the schema we, is like the actual feature generated with this data source uh, you see like a user ID a timestamp and maybe the latest payment field timestamp things like that and then the transformations is the actual the the, the interface you called, um, provided by us, it's like, like, for example, this unified transformer, and you just providing um, some of the aggregators or um, the function when you extract the payment from the data source, and then call this function it will be done. So this is the code like uh, for data scientists to 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 use to write, um, but still like uh, I think it's already improved when I left the company, but uh, it's, I hope it gives you an idea like how this works. So outcomes. Um, so we compile, compile two simple features like, like user checkout feature, time sense user checkout feature, and the time sense user as payment figures. Uh, a lot of like back figuring time is definitely reduced a lot. It's used to take weeks to backfigging the historical data, data using the old way. But with this new system, it's kind of just one hour to be able to do it. Uh, the reason behind that is like the historical data sources is actually including every data in there. But when we switch to the streaming data sources, it's kind of partitioned uh, into just these streams. So the historical data is not that big files anymore. So when you run it, it will be really, really faster. And code lines is reduced a lot too. Um, you, they assign you to define, create many files and use code genes to generate code. But now you just like uh, define the, the interface shown before. And registries, uh, we register like uh, many data sources, uh, as many as we can 
is actually just like a S3 file path or like the topic name in it. And then the data scientist can just quickly look up the data sources and use it. Okay, future improvement. Um, so one thing I guess keep going is like um, the out of the box transformation interface. I think that's something really helpful. Uh, again, it's like um, we want to simplify the human process to understanding the beam. So as better, uh, we need to provide like the function negative for them as much as we can. And but still, like even data scientists need that. I think like as software engineer as myself, we still need that. Like the there's still some complexities using Apache Beam. To be honest, feel, uh, from my point of view, it's like there are still some concept when you need to learn when you use it. So uh, it's better like something like a watermark and and all those like stateful processing. Um, it would be great if there is a easier to pick up transformation framework on top of that. That would be really helpful. And another one is the improvement on the Beam Spark Runner. Uh, there are still a couple issues running on the Spark Runners, and I think that's something you need to improve too. Um, cool. That's just my topic. <laughs>